We are at a water symposium where we're looking at water as a sacred substance. We're looking at the politics and economics of water, what it is, the contamination of water worldwide, and the issues surrounding it from top to bottom. In that light, we have one of the most renowned doctors who have come out publicly about the subject of water and is the author of two most interesting books. Dr. Mangan Jelic is the author of Your Body's Many Cries for Water and most recently, Water Cures, Drugs Kill, How Water Cured Incurable Diseases. His premise is a startling one and one that has utterly rocked the medical community. We're very glad to have the doctor on with us today because what he has to tell us can save countries billions and literally trillions of dollars and help to create a much healthier world. Doctor, so nice to have you on with us. Thank you, Mitch. Mitchell. Absolutely. It's now, a ple my pleasure to be on the air with you. Oh, good. I'm very glad. And talk to your audience. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> well, they've been waiting to hear from you for a while. Because well, actually, I've made reference to your work before. I hope they sharpen their ears because <laughs> what I have to say is very yeah. important to them. Now, what is the basis of your initial inquiry into this? Well, about 22 years ago, I gave a, two glasses of water to a person who was labeled uh, with a disease called the peptic ulcer disease, and he was under excruciating pain. Two persons carried him to me, and uh, I had nothing to give him at that moment of the evening. I gave him two glasses of water, and the pain diminished, his pain diminished, and within eight minutes it disappeared. And that is when the world of medicine changed. For you. For everyone. Yeah. 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 Because I realized that water has medicinal properties, the lack of which we have never understood. As you know, I'm a trained medical doctor. I was trained at St. Mary's Hospital Medical School of London University. I had the honor and the privilege of being selected as one of the uh, resident doctors of my own university. And then I had the extreme honor of uh, being one of the last students of Sir Alexander Fleming who discovered penicillin. Mm. I'm telling you this uh, to yes. let you know that I was brought up in scientific environment of medicine. So when I discovered that water has medicinal properties, I realized that this uh, topic was never taught to me at the school and I became curious. So I continued to research the medicinal properties of water and two year, in two years and seven months, I treated over 3,000 people with peptic ulcer disease with water successfully. And I made a report on, on this discovery, and it was published as the main editorial of the Journal of Clinical Gastroenterology in June of 1983. And New York Times picked up the article and uh, commented on it, and it was syndicated all over the world announced so. to the world that water had medicinal properties. I was hoping that someone would pick up and take off from there in the, in the scientific medical community. Mm -hmm. medical community. And I was surprised when I discovered that nothing was happening. So I became a little bit uh, upset with my colleagues in medicine because this is a tremendous discovery to realize that water is a medication. Uh, but no one is looking at it. Or acting on it. But let me just ask about that study uh, where you got 3,000 positive cures. Yes. How, how many were the number of people in the study? Oh, there were lots of people. Uh, 3,000 cures was every single one who tried the water got cured. Oh, so 3,000 of 3,000 got the cure? Yes. Oh, absolutely. Okay. This is the important yeah, thing. Yeah, sure. Because then I came away with the understanding that these people were just thirsty. I was quenching their thirst. And we in medicine had labeled thirst as a disease. So this was the challenge before me. Oh, thirst uh, is considered a disease? Well, in modern medicine, yes. That's what they are doing. They're treating all these so-called diseases of dehydration with medication. That right. is why we have the sick care system. That is why we have a a uh, so-called sick care system that is costing this nation, American people, $1.7 trillion every year, and it's rising to 12% every year. 
Well, because, because we in medicine never understood water, never realized that water is important, and we always thought that it's a solid matter that dissolves yeah. in the water in the body that's important. So you helped to change the paradigm from thinking about the solid or solutes to the solvent. That is correct. That's, in 1987, I presented the guest lecture of a cancer conference under the title of Pain and Need for Paradigm Change, explained that the diseases of the human body occur when the body becomes dehydrated. That dehydration is the origin of pain and disease in the human body, including cancer. And uh, this shocked the scientific community. Yes. It, it really uh, uh, shocked them to total silence at the conference. But one by one afterwards they came and thanked me for this information because I had explained to them it's not this one item, one particle or another particle that causes the disease. In my approach, it's a system upheaval. Mm -hmm. A system, when a system is not functioning, it's that system this, that produces symptoms of dehydration that we've assumed to be disease conditions. So basically what you're saying, doctor, is that virtually all, if not all, diseases are or really caused by I, systemic dehydration. All diseases are either states of dehydration, complications of dehydration, or consequences of dehydration. God almighty. And water is a nutrient. It is the deficiency of this nutrient in the body that causes the health problems. Depending on where this nutrient is missing in the physiological arena of the body, mm -hmm. that, that area begins to manifest the symptoms of that deficiency. And we have labeled these symptoms of deficiency as diseases. The human body manifests dehydration in four different ways. Perceptive feelings, when you're tired, you haven't done a good day's work, it means that you're short of water. Because water is the main source of energy to all living things. It is water that energizes all physiological functions. When you break down meat, a chunk of meat, Unless water is there to break it down, that meat is absolutely useless. It has absolutely no energy for your body. Mm. It is only when it's hydrolyzed, broken down by water, that the energy of meat comes out. But it's actually mostly the energy of water that is given to the meat. When you break down a piece of bread or a piece of cheese, it is the water that transfers its energy to what it is breaking down and we assimilate that energy. So basically, yes, uh, water well, that's is... that's the transport function, the carrier function, which is generally known to medicine, is it not? It's not, no. That's not? The process of hydrolysis is a metabolism of water, and the medical community has assumed that water has absolutely no metabolism. It's an inert substance. It is a solvent, a means of uh, uh, transport, and a packing material. These are three life sustaining properties of yes. water. But water has three other life-giving properties. The life-giving properties of water are it produces hydroelectricity where you need electricity, mm. when, you, when you need energy. All neurotransmission system depends on energy produced by hydro hydroelectricity at the cell membrane of the nerve tissue. Then you have the process of hydrolysis which energizes whatever it breaks down. And then you have the uh, adhesive property of water which assembles everything together. Mm. So these are the life uh, giving properties of water that we in medicine never understood. And this is what I brought out and, and I have published in my book Your Body's Many Crimes for Water and now after 10 years of that book being in the